All right, welcome to another example for the slope deflection method here. We have a pretty interesting problem. It's a frame, it's a three-piece frame. And instead of having fixed ends at uh, points A and D, we actually have pins. Um, the important concept here to remember is that there are no moments supported by pins, right? Mo pins don't, don't uh, um, supply a moment, they only have resistance um, in the x direction and in the y direction, right? Um, so for this frame we have uh, segments A, B, and D, C are 15 feet, so the frame is 15 feet high and the frame is 20 feet wide and at the very top we just have a distributed load the load is 3.6 kips per foot um, I'm also going to state here that EI is constant okay, and we want to figure out uh, what the moments are at A, B, C, um, and D, right? And in order to find that, or the internal moments, right? And in order to find that, uh, we need to write our equations. And remember, our general equation is Mij is equal to 2Ei over L times 2 theta I plus theta J. Uh, minus 3 times psi of ij plus any fixed end moments uh, the member may have, right? So, for this particular frame, you can see that if if it under underwent this loading, um, you know, the top piece would deflect like this, and the bottom, well, we don't really know what's going to happen, so I'm just going to draw this generic um, deflected shape. I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, I mean, I have a pretty good sense, but it's, it's going to deform. What I'm trying to get to is um, that there are no chord rotations for any of these, so we can safely assume that psi of AB is equal to psi of BC is equal to psi of D, or sorry, CD, I guess it could be the same. They're all equal to zero. Um, in order to find our moments for all these uh, joints and members, um, you know, we need to plug everything into this big equation, uh, figure out what our unknowns are, and in this case, uh, our unknowns are theta A, uh, theta B, theta C, and theta D, right? Uh, theta A and D, if it was fixed end, they'd be zero, but in this case, they're not, they're pins, so they have some type of slope, and we don't know uh, what that slope is, so all of these. Um, are unknowns. These are what we need to find. Okay, so the first thing to do is we need to split this structure up and see what's going on internally. So if I cut the uh, BC here and I cut pretty much the joints off, right? So I'm cutting all the joints. Um, this is how my structure is going to look like. You'll, you'll have, uh, I'll do it in the same color. Uh, you'll have, let's see, you'll have BC there you'll have A, B there, you'll have uh, C, D there, you'll have this joint B and C, then you'll have this little joint for the pin, right? So you have the pin here, the pin here, this is pin D, this is pin A, this is joint B, this is joint C. <clears throat> Remember, our, um, all of our moments, our internal moments, <coughs> excuse me, are going to have a positive sign convention. So the positive sign convention, remember, is clockwise. So this member, BC, this is clockwise, 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 clockwise. And the joints are going to have equal and opposite moments, right? So this is going clockwise, this is going counterclockwise, this is going clockwise, that means this is going counterclockwise. Again, same thing here, just equal and opposite, right? So we have our moments. This is moment A, B. This is moment B, A. This is moment B, C, B, C. This is moment C, B. This is moment C, D. And this is moment D, C, right? So to write our equations, oh, and there's, remember, there's this distributed load here acting on this member, right? That was 3.6 kip per foot. 
So we need to write our equations. Okay? And we'll start, you know, we'll, we'll start here on the left side. We'll do remember A B and B A first. So um, let's do it here. <clears throat> you have moment A B is equal to two E I over the length and the length uh, remember was 15 feet so it's 15 uh, times 2 theta a uh, minus I'm sorry plus theta b minus uh, 3 psi a b and that's equal to 0 and there's no fixed end moments the reason I didn't write fixed end moments was because this member right here there's there's nothing here to cause a moment um, there's no external forces right there's nothing being applied to this beam there's no fixed end moments there so member BA or moment BA is same thing 2EI over length uh, 2 theta B plus theta A minus 3 psi B A right that's equal to zero and again there's nothing there to cause a fixed end moment. Uh, this equation we can simplify. This is zero, right? This is zero. So we have 2EI over 15 uh, times 2 theta A plus theta B. Uh, that's equal to zero, right? Uh, we can simplify this one. 2EI over 15 times 2 theta B plus theta A uh, is equal to zero, right? So those are the equations for these two moments, MBA and MAB. So now we move on to member BC. In this case, we do have something uh, acting on this beam, um, and that's going to cause a fixed end moment. So we're going to have a fixed end moment for member BC. So let's write the equation for BC. Remember, the length of BC is is 20 feet. So this frame is 20 feet wide, and it's 15 feet tall, right? So for member BC, <clears throat> you're going to have 2EI over length, and length was 20, remember? And it's going to be 2 theta B plus theta C uh, minus 3 psi um, BC and then you're going to have minus, right, because we're doing the left side, uh, WL squared over uh, 12. And remember, that's your fixed end moment equation for a, a uniformly distributed load. Okay, weight length over 12, weight length squared over 12. And for member CB, we're going to have 2EI over 20 times 2 theta C plus theta B minus 3 psi CB minus, I'm sorry, plus plus WL squared over 12. Remember this is plus because it's on the right side, right? We're doing the right side now. And here we know this is 0, this is 0. Um, remember there's no chord rotation in any of the members on this frame. Um, and if I plugged in, you know, W, if I plugged in 3.6 for W and then for length I believe is 20 the length of the member is 20 so 20 squared over 12 so I'll actually write this equation in yellow uh, we'll get 2 EI over 20 times 2 theta B <clears throat> plus theta C and if I if I add this to the other side the WL squared over 12 um, and if I plugged in 3.6, so length squared, so 20 squared times 3.6 divided by 12, and I added it to the other side, um, I should get um, I should get 120, right? Uh, same thing here. I get 2 EI over 20, uh, 2 theta C plus theta B um, is equal to minus 120, right? Um, and then let's actually, let's just do M, um, MCD, right? Uh, MCD is this member right here. 
this one right here. Um, let's see, MCD. So MCD would be, let's see, 2EI, right, over at length, and length is 15 um, <clears throat> times 2 theta C plus theta D minus 3 psi CD. And again, there's no there's no fixed end moments, so that's just zero, um, and that equals zero. And if we simplify this, this is zero. We'll get two ei over fifteen times two theta c plus theta d, um, and that's just equal to zero, right? And then finally, mdc. So you just switch the two t two ei over fifteen, your length. Is 2 theta d plus theta c uh, minus uh, 3 psi dc, but again that's 0, um, then plus any fixed end moments. In this case, there are none. Um, so you simplify this equation out, you should get 2 ei over 15, 2 theta d uh, plus theta c is equal to 0. So that's that's cool. We have we have one equation here, two, three, four, five, six. So we found all the equations um, for the internal moments. The next thing to do would be uh, to figure out what these unknown state of A, B, C, and D are uh, by trying to figure out equations for them. So in our case, we actually have four unknowns. We have theta A, theta B, theta C, and theta D. Um, so we'll need four equations, okay? But we'll actually continue that on in the next video. So see you then.